We are very honored today to have the Superior General of the Society of St. Pius X, Father Davide Pagliarani, with us. He's been spending a week here preaching a retreat to the priests and spending a few more days here with us and has graciously offered to, to say this Mass and to preach to you. So I will leave the pulpit to him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Dear fathers, dear brethren, it's a joy today to be here and to share with you this uh, joy and this, most of all, this peace of Easter. Three times in the Gospel we just read, our Lord is stressing that he's giving to the apostles and to us his peace. His peace, this peace that he had promised to the apostles, is the main gift of Easter. Peace is even more deep than joy. And I would like to meditate with you a few minutes about this gift of peace. Why is it so related to Easter? That's because uh, during his, his passion, our Lord fought the worst of the wars and he won. He won uh, on uh, Good Friday, destroying sin. He defeated sin forever. But in a certain way, it was not enough. He had to erase from the dead because death is the last consequence of sin. There is death because there is sin. And uh, through his resurrection, our Lord destroyed not only sin, but even the last punishment, the last consequence of sin, the last malediction that the sin provoked. And his resurrection, his victory on death is a, an image, a beginning of our own resurrection. If one day we can uh, also follow our Lord we will have our resurrection behind him, our own Easter, our personal Easter, so to speak. At the end of time, death will be destroyed forever, because sin will be destroyed forever. This uh, struggle against the sin that our Lord uh, won already 2,000 years ago is still going on. Each one of us uh, has to struggle also against sin, to win with our Lord and to have, following him, his own resurrection. And that's why We feel at Easter, we feel during this time, we feel this deep peace. Peace is the result of a victory. Peace is the end of a war, a war that we won. That's why this deep, this deep joy. And this joy is already is already 
an anticipation of the joy and of peace of heaven. We, we are not going to have our own resurrection to come back to this life full of tears. We will have our resurrection in order to be with our Lord, enjoying with Him the vision of God, enjoying the vision of our Lord. Heaven is nothing else but this constant vision, presence of our Lord. And uh, in order to express this, the Church, during 40 days, is living with us in the sanctuary, the Pascal candle. The Pascal candle is there as a sign of, uh, of heaven. The Pascal candle is there as the sign of our Lord, full of glory, enjoying us here and enjoying the blessed in heaven. It's the most beautiful uh, symbol in the liturgy of our Lord, glorious. Why? The wax of the Paschal candles means his humanity, his, his spotless humanity. That pure wax means the purity of our Lord covered with our sins, but never touched by our sins. And uh, the, wo the wounds, the five wounds are still there. Even if uh, in heaven the body of our Lord is glorious, he kept the five wounds. We will see the wounds of our Lord. Why he kept them? Since they are a sign of uh, his suffering. It's quite strange. Why do they want to heal from his five wounds? He kept them as a trophy. In the eternity, he's showing them to the Father as a sign of his love for the Father, of his obedience, of his sacrifice. And he will show the wounds to us also. Here you can see how I loved you. Here you can see how much I paid for you. And uh, you know that in the Pascal candles is written uh, this year, every year, the Pascal candles, uh, there is the date, 2021. Why? Because history belongs to our Lord. All times, all eras, they belong to Him. Is the master, is the king of history. He will judge at the end of time. He will judge whatever happened throughout the history. Since Adam till the end of time. Why he got this power to judge the history of mankind? Because he came into this world. He came with us and he lived in our time also. So to speak, he left the eternity and he came into history. It is a sign of Christ the King having this power to judge every whatever happened in every year, in every era. 
But at the same time, Alpha and Omega in the Pascal candle, the first and the last, last uh, letter of the alphabet, they remind us that he is eternal. He is the beginning and the end of everything. He is the beginning and the end of every creature. Every creature comes from him and every creature will find his happiness only in him. Time and eternity, they belong to him. And uh, this light, the flame, the flame of course is the most important part of the candle. The, ca the Pascal candle without the flame wouldn't be a Pascal candle. That light uh, means his divinity. That light means that our Lord is the shining, the projection of the beauty of the Father, of the divinity of the Father. He is God as God, as, as, as the Father is God. And uh, that light uh, also means uh, something extremely important for us. That light means uh, the special grace we will have in heaven. In heaven, we will obtain a new grace that we don't have here on earth. In heaven, we will see God. But in order to see God, and to enjoy the vision of God, to enjoy the vision of our Lord, we need that light. We need that light which is coming from our Lord. We need that light which is the main grace that our Lord got for us. He merited for us the possibility to see God. And this light, this light is working already in another way on earth. Here we don't see God. But when the Pascal candle is enlightened on the night of Easter, a special prayer is made to our Lord. This uh, light of Christ, glorious, who is uh, arising from the dead, this light will uh, take away all the darkness of the heart and of the mind. How many times uh, we are troubled by our feelings, we don't know if we have to trust our feelings, our impressions, and most of all, our mind, our thoughts, our ideas, how many times we are troubled. And when we are troubled, we lose the peace of our Lord. This light is there to take away all this kind of darkness in the heart and in the mind. This is the grace of Easter. And as I said at the beginning, this special peace we can experience during this period is an anticipation of the peace of heaven. It's the most beautiful grace of the liturgical year. Let's ask Our Lady Let's beg Our Lady to understand this deeper and deeper. No one as Our Lady was associated to the suffering of Our Lord, and by consequence, no one as Our Lady already on earth had this peace deeply in her heart. 
our Lord shared with her, first of all, this peace is the most important grace we need. Because when we have peace in the, in the depth of our soul, everything is easier. Everything is clear. And uh, most of all, we are strengthened. We are strengthened by this peace because uh, we don't want to lose it for any reason. Let's ask uh, this special grace uh, to Our Lady, Our Lady of Sorrows. And uh, let's keep this uh, spirit of prayer, spirit of peace during this uh, Paschal season and of course during all our life. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen.